Hi, you guys. This is Dana Hawk from the Museum of the American Indian in Novato. And I want to talk about ethics and wild crafting for a minute. We touch on this in some of the videos for sure, but I want to go a little deeper with it. So one of the things to remember is if you're going on to park lands, it's not okay to wild craft. However, I encourage you to have conversations with the rangers because they're great to talk to and you just never know. They do sometimes do a clearing. They'll thin out a patch of something. So maybe you can get in there and ask if you can um, get the date for some period of time when they might be doing a thinning of something and you can go in and get something. But have some conversations with rangers. They're great to talk to. So have, be really mindful of those kinds of rules. The other thing to talk about is a general attitude when you are wild crafting. And I am famous for catching myself getting into the mindset of just the hungry hunter. I might have a recipe or a medicine I wanna make and I can't wait to go out and find the plant and get it quick. And I have to just calm down and I have to remember some of the native rules of picking maybe the fifth or sixth or seventh plant that I see not the first one. And that's partially to ensure that there are plenty in the place where I am wild crafting from. And the other thing is to have an attitude of having a relationship with the land and the environment you're going into. So you're going into a community that you're not normally a part of. So taking your time and observing what's going on with the animals and the other plants that are in relationship with that plant once you find it is a really good practice and another good practice is trying to get used to feeling out for permission from the plant if it even wants to be picked. And that is a new way of thinking for a lot of us, but it's the old way of doing things that's more indigenous. And it's really good to just try to get into practice as weird as it might feel. Maybe go and sit with a plant for a while without harvesting it and get to know it and develop sort of a relationship with it. And you'll start to kind of trust that feeling if it's okay to harvest it or not. And another part is really giving gratitude and leaving something. So traditionally people would leave, sometimes people would leave a bit of tobacco. And I think that that's being discouraged a little bit these days because tobacco is pretty heavily processed and it's not necessarily a good thing. One thing I do is I just give up a little bit of my water bottle. Like I've been hiking and that's a really precious thing, water. Just give a little bit to a plant that looks thirsty. Leave a song, but it's reciprocity. So you're not just taking, taking, but it's learning to have more of a relationship. And the more we can develop a relationship with the natural world, the more we love it. And the more we love it, the more we protect it. And that's what's really needed more than anything right now. Also, a lot of these wild foods are now available at the farmer's market. I know that I did a nettle video and I mentioned that stinging nettle is available at the farmer's markets when it's farmer's market season. And there's other wild foods available. A lot of these things you can grow in your own backyard. So that's another level of relationship with a plant that can be so much fun. So good harvesting out there and relationship building develop those relationships with the natural world and follow the rules of the parks and have a good relationship with your rangers. Thank you so much. Like us and subscribe.